All right, thank you, Dr. Johnson. So ideally, there's some ideas, tips on your scarring, lacerations, burns type of stuff, some things I'll be able to use around the house, obviously, with the young kids. So we'll move on to the next one. Dr. Johnson did a great job staying on time. So we are still on time, and we will welcome up next uh, Dr. Greg ba Gregory Barber with the evaluation and treatment of foot and ankle injuries. So Dr. Barber graduated from Allegheny College in Meadville, Pennsylvania with a Bachelor of Science degree, earned his Doctor of Podiatric Medicine from the Ohio College of Pod Podiatric Medicine. Dr. Barber joined the United States Air Force as a surgical podiatrist and had tours in Illinois, Mississippi, and finally here in Dayton. Uh, he spent nine years at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. He was a consultant to the Surgeon General for Podiatry and was heavily involved with diabetic, diabetic wound care and hyperbaric treatments of lower extremity ulcers. Uh, Dr. Barber joined Wright State Orthopedic and Sports Medicine in 2005 and continues with comprehensive care for patients here in Dayton. So please welcome Dr. Barber. Morning, I'm Dr. Barber. We're going to try to talk about some uh, evaluation and treatment of some foot and ankle injuries. Uh, I do not have any type of uh, payments coming to me. Uh, for you in your office, you're going to be seeing uh, different uh, patients. We'll be looking at uh, football injuries, basketball, uh, soccer, track, and uh, volleyball. Normally these uh, kids are in fairly good health. Um, the other side of the coin is you're going to have some uh, weekend warriors that are probably going to be in uh, a much worse uh, type of uh, shape and uh, treating them will probably be harder than treating the kids. Uh, the injuries usually fall into two major groups, the traumatic and uh, overuse. Uh, the traumatic is usually due to a collision a fall or a twist as opposed to the overuse, which is the uh, overtraining, the poor flexibility, uh, improper uh, mechanical alignment of the foot, and uh, usually improper shoe gear. Uh, one of the easiest things that will come into your office but uh, can be uh, painful is the, uh, the blister. Uh, this one here, uh, most likely due to uh, the shoe actually being loose, the friction of the heel on the uh, back of the shoe, the fluid-filled uh, uh, deformity can cause pain. Uh, on the toe, you'll see the same thing. These are treated once they get to this state. Uh, in my office, I will clean the wound and uh, use a surgical scissor that's uh, been uh, sterilized and actually cut the wound or cut the blister at its lowest point. Uh, and what I'm looking at is this area here, if you make a, a staff type of incision and drain all that out, that'll relieve all the uh, pressure build up, leave the roof of the blister intact because that is a, kind of a sterile environment. You drain all that out of there, that will relieve the pain. You clean it with some uh, alcohol, put a dry dressing on it. Uh, a lot of runners will then use mole skin, double off their uh, socks, and usually they can return to their uh, activities in a fairly quick uh, time frame. This is uh, Heinz Field in Pittsburgh where the Steelers play. Um, runner's toes or um, uh, the subungal hematoma is the uh, hallux or even the second toe rubbing up against the uh, tip of the toe. It's usually a forward mo momentum of the uh, foot into the toe box, causing this uh, uh, painful deformity. Uh, the first and second toes are the, usually the ones most affected. The uh, uh, fluid buildup does cause pain. In this area, I would use a, uh, an instrument just to relieve, remove the pressure to allow that to drain out from the uh, uh, posterior aspect of the toe here. If it is very acute and painful, uh, I will put a elevator under the uh, front end of the toenail to allow that drainage to come out. Try to leave the toenail intact. Otherwise, your 
removing that nail may cause a more permanent damage to the nail in the years to follow. Uh, just like Dr. Johnson said, there are people that will heat a needle, uh, trying to relieve the, uh, the pressure buildup. Again, you have to see this very acutely in the first uh, several days. After that, that blood does dry and usually is less painful. Uh, this summer, there was a 30-foot duck that came from Europe and uh, basically floated around Pittsburgh. This is not a orthopedic uh, type of injury, but can be painful to your uh, patients that are active in sports. Uh, in this instance, this nail has been uh, deformed for a long period of time. You can see the uh, sharp curvature of the nail rather than it being straight and flat. Um, these are difficult for the patient at home to treat and normally they will cause their own uh, infections. This is more likely what you'll see with uh, some redness, a little bit of drainage. Uh, this is uh, going to slow your uh, athlete down and soaks, antibiotic, uh, topically or orally, do help, but you usually have to remove the offending portion of the nail in uh, which case then you're better able to get uh, back into your shoes, back to activities. Um, you don't have to have a lot of equipment in your office to do this. Uh, numbing the toe up with uh, four to six cc's of a uh, plain lidocaine, and even if you have a scissor and you go at an oblique angle just to get that uh, uh, front uh, two-thirds of the nail out will relieve the pressure. Uh, later on, we can always do this formal treatment where we will use a phenol acid to permanently kill the root of the nail. This is a view from Mount Washington showing the incline and the three rivers of Pittsburgh. Um, a newer problem uh, you may see is what we call turf toe. Uh, this is a damage to the capsule of the first metatarsal phalangeal joint. Uh, you can see the uh, picture on the right. The toe is in a hyperextended position. Uh, you don't always get uh, tears, but even just a stretch or uh, strain of this uh, capsule can cause uh, pain with pushing off. Uh, in this instance, it's a very radical uh, type of uh, hyperextension which causes the dislocation. As that great toe has uh, ridden up on the head of the first metatarsal, uh, you're, there's getting some grinding on the cartilage and later in life they can develop a hallux limitus, hallux rigidus due to that uh, trauma years before. Uh, with the uh, more minor uh, strains, the, or the mole skin uh, strappings that you can put onto the, uh, the toe in the first ray to uh, minimize flexion of the gray toe and to uh, stabilize this wound. Uh, for every type of thing we're going to talk about today, you're going to have your typical uh, uh, ice, uh, anti-inflammatories, uh, change in shoe gear. Uh, in this instance, a uh, stiffer sole shoe uh, will help to uh, stabilize this and allow for better healing. Uh, another injury in the same area is the uh, sesamoid injury. Uh, in this instance, uh, the uh, under the block, you see a fracture of the tibial sesamoid. Uh, it's going to be a little bit more of a ragged look to the two pieces of the uh, sesamoid as opposed to this one here where the uh, edges are smooth, uh, normally indicating that this is a bipartite or two-piece sesamoid, which has been this way uh, since childbirth. Now, the connection to these two uh, sesamoids has a fiber uh, type of connection and that fiber connection can be injured to give you the same type of pain as the uh, sesamoid fracture. Sesamoiditis is uh, difficult to treat uh, because every step you take flexes the gray toe and pulls on these two fragments. Uh, ice, anti-inflammatories again, a cutoff in a, the shoe to allow for that area to uh, rest and be a little bit more mobile is helpful. There are occasions where I will inject the area with a uh, steroid to try to settle the inflammation down. This is the permani sandwich in Pittsburgh. It's a meal in itself. Bread, meat, cheese, fresh.
French fries, coleslaw, and tomato all in a sandwich. Morton's neuroma. Uh, this is a uh, painful condition in the forefoot, uh, usually a twisting type of uh, injury. Uh, it's shown here between metatarsals uh, three and four. Uh, Ninety-five percent of all the Morton's neuromas are between toes two, three, and three, four. It's an inflammation swelling of the nerve as it goes between the uh, metatarsal heads uh, going up into the toes. You'll get a sharp uh, shooting, burning, tingling type of uh, discomfort in the toes. Uh, you can try ice, uh, anti-inflammatories, a device in your shoe to help to offload the area. Uh, most will require a cortisone injection into the uh, uh, web space uh, to uh, settle that inflammation down. I will do up to uh, three injections in a six-week time frame. Uh, most will recover uh, and be able to get back to regular uh, sport-type activities. Uh, very few have to be uh, surgically removed. This is the old igloo where the penguins used to play. Toe fractures, uh, in this instance, this was more of a uh, kicking type of motion to uh, injure the base of the fourth and fifth uh, uh, toes. The fracture on the uh, fourth toe most likely will be unstable and uh, may need uh, some surgical repair the fifth toe fracture. If you look uh, closely at the base, uh, it's involving almost 50% of the cartilage service and uh, will likely have uh, ramifications later in life, may have to excise that piece. Uh, here, a little avulsion off of the uh, hallux, uh, usually uh, not as uh, problematic. Taping of these uh, toes uh, for four to six weeks is uh, going to help stabilize the toes and get them uh, the relief they need. This is a special circumstance where you have a dislocation of the toe. Uh, X-ray will show a fracture usually of the uh, proximal phalanx. In this instance, what you would do is anesthetize the toe pull out on the toe and then bring the toe back over into its proper position. That is something that you can do in your office and uh, strap again for six to eight weeks. And again, the uh, everybody thinks that the body strapping is uh, a minor type of thing, but if you do that for six weeks, it will allow for the healing of the toe and allow for better uh, return to activities. Plantar fasciitis heel spur syndrome. This is your typical uh, heel pain. Uh, first step out of bed hurts. Uh, after a couple minutes, you do feel a little bit better. Uh, and then as you get up from the couch, get up from the car, get up from the dinner table, you get that sharp shooting, burning, aching type of pain, uh, either to palpation of the mid arch or to the uh, posterior medial heel at the insertion of the fascia is where you're going to have this pain. You can have a heel spur or not. Uh, people say, oh, you need x-rays for heel pain. You'll have plantar fasciitis without heel spurs. You'll have heel pain with the heel spur. So what you're doing, you're treating the symptoms. You're not treating the x-ray. I'm very aggressive with stretching on this. If people stretch, they will get better. If they ice, use oral anti-inflammatories, these new compound gel topical anti-inflammatories, injections, night splints, and shoe changes, they'll get better, but if they don't stretch, they won't. So stress that they need to stretch two to three minutes, three to four times a day, and they will get better. Uh, imagine laying on a, a couch, having your leg totally straight, and then pulling back on the front part of your toes with a beach towel or a belt. 
I don't do the wall stretch. I don't do the stretch where you stand on a step and drop your heel. I just like the straight leg stretch of the forefoot with a beach towel belt. That will get them better. All the other ancillary treatments help you get better faster, <laughs> but you need to stretch. Uh, this is what they call low die taping. Uh, it helps for a few days before you can get them into a, a device. Uh, custom orthotics in town will run anywhere from three to four hundred dollars. Uh, not everybody needs a three to four hundred dollar orthotic, but most do need something to help support the arch and take the tension off of that plantar fascia. Most patients on their own will run and get a heel cup because their heel hurts. Again, if you can stress to them the mechanics of the problem that it is along the band of the arch that is the problem and not just cushioning the heel, uh, they will get better faster. Pump bump or Haglund's deformity is a uh, bony deformity on the posterior heel that uh, can inflame a bursa sac and cause pain with shoe gear and with activity. Uh, it can be uh, a strong enough type of deformity that if you look in the back of the patient's tennis shoes, they will have ground away some of the uh, uh, fiber in the inside of the shoe and uh, actually you can see the plastic on the heel counter. Uh, this is a surgery for uh, most of these patients that uh, don't get the relief from the conservative measures, unfortunately to get at the pump bump, you have to deflect the Achilles tendon away and now you're looking at uh, six to eight weeks in casting. This is a PNC Park, home of the Pirates. Seavers disease is a uh, apophysitis of the uh, child's uh, heel. The uh, open growth plates are having uh, such an extreme pull by the Achilles tendon. They get pain, swelling uh, with the sports type of activities. Uh, usually the, uh, the basketball players because they're running, jumping all the time. Uh, this is usually in the 8 to 14 year old group. Uh, can be older. I uh, had a uh, young ball player in the other day that had uh, five days of basketball practice and he had four games in two days. The parents are the ones you have to worry about because when you tell them he needs ice, anti-inflammatories, proper shoes, maybe a little bit of a heel lift and rest, they says, well, when can he go back to play? You know, because now the kids think that this is the most important thing in their lives and right now they can't afford to come out of the game. Uh, the parent was asking me when can he return to practice because he can't not make the team. So you really have to do your best to uh, sit them down for at least uh, a couple weeks to sell that inflammation down. In this instance the heel cup or the uh, the yellowish type of heel uh, pad that was shown in the other one will help because it does help to lift the heel up a little bit and take some of the strain off of the Achilles tendon. This is uh, in the Caribbean, Atlantic Ocean on your left, Caribbean on the right. Stress fractures are uh, tiny, uh, incomplete hairline fractures usually found in metatarsals 2, 3, and 4. Patients will present to your office, if it's in the first uh, five, seven days, uh, complaining of pain, swelling, usually pinpoint over one area. Uh, you take x-rays in the first five, seven days, normally you will not see anything. Uh, you're only treating them clinically. Here, 14, 18 days, you will see the bone callus forming. Uh, if you keep them stable with the uh, uh, post-op shoe, Normally they will do fine. Uh, again, they'll most likely be out of uh, uh, sports for several weeks. You've taken x-rays uh, in two different occasions now and you're still having complaint of pain. Uh, a bone scan, if there is a uh, fracture, will show up hot like this on the uh, left side of the screen. 
Again, another picture of Three Rivers with the gateway clipper. Liz Frank injury is a uh, rotational displacement of the uh, metatarsal bases. Usually, if you're looking at the first and second metatarsal base as your midline, the uh, second, third, fourth, fifth metatarsals will shift laterally. Uh, this is normally a rotational force with the foot in a plantar flexed uh, position. Uh, this here is radical and would need surgery. Some other times you have a minimal displacement that may benefit just from casting, uh, but most uh, require open reduction internal fixation. Uh, you'll see this in basketball, you'll see it in football, you'll see it in uh, racquetball, going into a corner, twisting the foot, and uh, the, this is what we call the midfoot sprain. Uh, orthotics would help to uh, control that postoperatively. These are my cornhole tables. What you're going to see most in your office is going to be the uh, ankle sprain. Uh, the worse it looks, the, the more likelihood that you have had some uh, ligament tears. Uh, the lateral ankle ligaments are very weak. It doesn't take much to turn your ankle. Uh, this is a plantar flexion inversion type of injury. Uh, the anterior talar fib is the uh, weakest of the, the three ligaments on the lateral ankle. Um, nowadays, you're hearing more of the high ankle sprain, which is not only the uh, uh, ankle ligaments as well as the interosseous uh, type of connection between the tib and fib. Again, this is where they're talking six to eight weeks for uh, getting back to sports. If you took an x-ray with a quote-unquote normal ankle sprain, you would normally not see any bony changes. This is a stress view with the patient uh, having some uh, ankle anesthesia, uh, and you see the severe Taylor tilt uh, telling you that the lateral uh, complex has been totally disrupted. In the past, this was uh, undertreated with uh, going to the emergency room, here's an ace wrap, here's a pair of crutches, you'll be fine. Uh, if you don't over-treat these patients, uh, they'll be in your office for months on end complaining of pain. Uh, also, when you have a ankle injury patient, you may also want to order a foot film because the Perineus uh, tendon insertion to the base of the fifth can uh, pull and avulse the base of the fifth with your plantar flexion inversion injury of the ankle. Everybody knows rice. Now they're adding it to a P for price for protection. Uh, we'll all know to elevate ice, uh, crutches, compression. If you're going to use just for your grade one minor sprains of the ankle, the ace wrap is fine, but go on the top of the foot into the arch and then dorsiflex and evert the foot to again relax those ligaments on the outside part of the ankle and then figure eight. It's easier just to get these canvas ankle lacers, uh, sportopedics, uh, hocks, all these will have. Uh, these devices. I like sending the patients to Sportopedics or Hawks because they will actually get fitted there. You go to uh, Kroger's, Myers, Walmart, there's a box and it says it's an ankle brace. You don't know if it's going to fit you or not. Their 20% copay usually ends up being the same that you would pay over the counter. So, you know, I, I would send the patients there to get the proper fit. Um, for a Worst sprain, you have the air cast stirrup. Most patients don't need the fiberglass anymore because we have the cam walker. So if you have a serious enough uh, injury that is fairly unstable, but they need to be getting around and walking, uh, this cam walker allows them to protect the foot and ankle for uh, weeks on end, uh, but also allows them to bathe and be more comfortable.
talk about the uh, cryotherapy uh, before. 15 minutes uh, every hour for several hours a day will help to greatly reduce the swelling in the uh, foot and ankle and allow for better return to range of motion. Uh, physical therapy post sprain, uh, you can send somebody to physical therapy a couple times a week for four weeks. If you have them at home doing simple O's clockwise, simple O's counterclockwise, plus, minus, they'll get a lot of range of motion on their own that they can do at home every single day and put the onus on them to get better. The hardest work is after they feel better, I have them actually draw a capital A with their foot, draw a capital B with their foot, draw a C, draw a D. That puts the foot and ankle in through every single range of motion they're ever going to need. And they just saved $20, $40, $50 a day for physical therapy. Willie we'll Stargell and uh, Terry Bradshaw, 1979, world champions. Achilles tendonitis, uh, Achilles tendinosis, Achilles tendinopathy. The name keeps changing because of some questions as to what part of the Achilles tendon or Achilles tendon sheath is affected here. Obviously, is swelling in the uh, posterior aspect of the heel, uh, which interferes with range of motion and is uh, painful, most likely over overtraining on hills, running, uh, it's a irritation, and it greatly reduces your range of motion. Try to do the simple wall stretch before any uh, any warm up or run, because if you don't, you'll end up with an Achilles tendon rupture, which is the uh, tear in the uh, distal one third of Achilles tendon. Uh, here you can see it's a complete disruption of the Achilles tendon. Uh, most of these do need repair although I had an orthopedic surgeon that had an Achilles tendon and he didn't think he got any better, any quicker than some of the patients he's just casted for six to eight weeks. Mario New, shin splints, uh, painful uh, discomfort in the uh, anterior aspect of the leg. Um, you can get this from uh, running with improper shoe gear, uh, heel training. I've had uh, band members have this problem from uh, marching on concrete because they don't have access to the uh, football field because the football players are out there. Um, I was in the military and every other 18 year old that's used to wearing tennis shoes all their lives coming in wearing boots now have uh, the shin splints. Uh, it's usually an irritation on the front part of the leg with walking, standing, uh, usually involving the anterior tib uh, muscle and tendon, ice, anti-inflammatories, uh, stretching type of exercises all help this. Um, you can actually get a stress fracture of the tibia if this is uh, going on too long. Uh, an orthotic will keep the foot and ankle in a uh, better position and uh, help with uh, recovery. Wife and I at the Three Rivers with the six Super Bowl trophies. Orthotics come in any shape and size. Uh, again, they can get very expensive, but uh, you're looking at either uh, something for accommodative support to help cushion, fill the space under the arch for your plantar fascia, something more functional to keep the foot and ankle in a better position with your uh, athletic type of shoes uh, to something very rigid uh, to uh, help with other sports type injuries. Here you can see the uh, shoe on the left, the posterior 
keel counter as a severely broken down, you can have a $400 orthotic in there and it's still going to tilt towards the, uh, the midline. So you definitely need to look at the posterior aspect of the shoe rather than the soles of the shoes. Here you can see the foot is in a heel valgus type of position, uh, rolling in, uh, pronated. Here the heel is now in a more upright vertical position because of the uh, support of the orthotics. Chocolate Labs may contain nuts. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. Can you give us, or is there a rule of thumb as to when an x ray is appropriate for an ankle injury in office? You can, the question is uh, when to do x rays for ankle injuries. I would probably always do it, just make sure you don't have a chip fracture of the uh, fibula. Uh, again, with the plantar flexion inversion type of injury, you're going to strain that ligament. Those ligaments are very weak, normally won't cause a fracture, but just to cover yourself to know how aggressive I treat that patient, I would always get extra, even though they're most likely always going to be negative. Right. You had to talk about with um, cancer. I think in Canada, they came up with a way to study really and the following fact is called a power of guidelines or when you x-ray they get to the ER when they come with uh, ankle sprain or any injury to the foot. If they are not able to raise their own foot and if they have tenderness for medial and lateral diameters or over the base of the foot metal transfer or on the base of the first metal transfer, these are the things if you find tenderness then yes, you have to get it. Otherwise you are pretty much okay. And more than 90 percent of the in fact, over 90 percent of the time, they will rule out all fractures following these guidelines. And again, I would always try to get a uh, at least an AP of the foot with your ankle views, just so you can see the base of the foot. Yeah. Would you uh, repeat what scores did you mention? The orthopedic scores for orthotics. Sportopedics. It's on uh, Stewart Street right there at Patterson, the green glass building. And then uh, for the north patient, Hawks Medical Supply and National. That's where you probably, the question is uh, dorsiflexing type of pain with a rower, um, prior ankle sprain. I probably would send them to physical therapy with evaluate, treat with the need to increase the uh, dorsiflexion. Um, it will be tougher the longer out it's been since the initial trauma, uh, depending again how was she treated, that kind of thing. So I think that she'll probably get a better range of motion than she has and hopefully uh, return to her uh, sport. Thank you for your time. All right, we are on schedule. We thought we are actually a little ahead of schedule. So we're going to go ahead and do our break now. So you get to, it's going to be about 20 minutes or so. We're going to start back up 10 minutes early in case we fall behind later. So instead of starting back up at 10, we'll start back at 9.50. But you have 20 minutes. We do have some beverages and I think some snacks on their way. And so you can relax. We'll see. start back up in 20 minutes. <laughs> 